What is Yelishek? How to make an unusual jewelry out of beads? How does felt dictate fashion trends? Coming up next in the art of making. Beads a unique material that allows the craftswoman to feel like a true creator. After all, what else can you call a person who creates real works of art from numerous tiny beads? Aida Naitkenova will tell us about the beading technique. Now she's working on a brush in the form of pomegranate, a symbol of wealth and fertility. There are a lot of techniques. Needlepoint is the closest one to the technique I'm using. There is also mixed beading technique. Embroidery with beads comes after beading. Felt embroidery is the technique I'm using. The history of beads is closely related with the advent of glassmaking. The word beads itself came from Arabic, busra or busir, which means false pearls. Museum exhibits show that the first jewelry made of beads appeared more than 4,000 years ago. Their homeland is considered to be ancient Egypt. Later, the production of glass and beads became common in the Roman Empire and then in Byzantium. After the conquest of Byzantium by the Turks, many craftsmen of glassmaking relocated to Venice. Venice sold beads around the world. It was a fashion trendsetter. At that time, the beads were used for embroidery of clothes, handbags, various covers, and even dishes. Beats was a sign of wealth. The status of a person, his finance and social class were determined by the embroidery of the clothing. Later, Venice moved its workshops to Murano Island to keep the secret of the beats production. To create a brush, first of all, we need beads and material from which we will create the brush. We need an idea. How do I make brush? First, I come up with what I want to see. Then I draw a pattern by which this brush will be embroidered. The template is transferred to the felt. I cut it out, and then I start the embroidery. Edges of the jewelry are covered with beads. For this purpose, first we fix the thread from the back side, loosen two beads and make a stitch. You can sew one bead at a time if they are of a complicated shape. This embroidery process takes about five, six hours. The preparation process is much longer. A lot of time is spent on the idea and search for the right material. The final result will depend on each shade of a single bead. It's better to use a bead mat so that it does not spread all over the table. And of course, special thread and needle for beads and the material that is needed to create the brush. There is now a wide variety of different materials that can be used in the creation of embroidery of the brush, and I'm actively using it. You can realize any of your ideas. Before choosing the kind of brush, you need to think with what you will wear it, how you will wear it. For a summer outfit or a spring jacket, for example, a funny buck, a fruit or a bee will be suitable. For an autumn coat or a knitted sweater, a large leaf, not too bright. In my works, I use all natural colors, green, brown and yellow. I also try to follow trends to see what will be fashionable this year. 
it's important not to forget about the rules. In winter, colder shades, white, blue, gray and silver are welcome. And in summer, more gold shades are used. Therefore, orange or red colors are preferred. Next, we stick a pin or special fittings and a piece of leather to make a solid foundation. The stage of assembly is very important. It's necessary to assemble the brush correctly. The class must be at the top, so that the brush does not hang under its weight. Make sure to use some sealing piece, so that the brush does not bend and keeps its shape. Choose materials of high quality. Uneven beads can ruin everything. My first handmade product was a hair clasp decorated with various gemstones. I made it and wore it the next day. There were many girls among the guests, my relatives. They took my hair clasp and asked me to make five more. That's how my creative path began. I get a great pleasure from what I do. It's a kind of meditation for me. In fact, embroidery is very fascinating. Time flies. When you sit for hours in a row and then you get up, everything can get dark. So be sure to do gymnastics. My second advice is not to be afraid. You know what they say, eyes are scared, but hands are working. The beadworks are incredibly beautiful and very stylish. The most popular are the beaded brushes. They can be pinned to a bag or a coat to complement the image, which will bring you lots of attention from admiring views. I create jewelry primarily for girls, women who want to give their appearance a certain character and style. The girl who prefers that jewelry is strong, beautiful and independent. I am sure that my brushes will give integrity to any image. Elishek is a Kyrgyz women's headwear in the form of a turban. Traditionally, it's worn by women after marriage. Depending on the form, it was possible to distinguish to which class its owner belonged. For this reason, the Kyrgyz gradually developed regional differences between the Elisheks. But one thing remained unchanged. In full form, it consists of three parts. The main color of the headwear was white, and there was a reason for it. Kyrgyz used white-colored fabrics during periods of a special joy. At a child's birth, baby was swaddled in white fabrics. In preparation for the wedding, the clothes also had to be of a white color. In ancient times, for Kyrgyz women, white elisheks served not only as a headwear, there was a fabric shortage at the time. For example, if someone of the family member died, the fabric was taken from the Elishek. Women were prepared for everything. Or the fabric might have been needed during childbirth. Therefore, women wore Elisheks wrapped around their heads and their length was 7 to 8 meters. The process of wearing the Elishek is a ritual. At first, the woman sat down, kept a kia, a white scale cup was put on her, which was worn under the yellow shack, and only after that it was covered with several layers of fabric. Mm -hmm. 
When a girl was four or five years old, she wore a hat and her hair was braided. She wore keptekiya that covered the neck and cheeks. So people could not see the face of a girl, her beauty. After marriage, girls wore ilishek. Married women were forbidden to wear keptekiya. Even if they put on a hat, they had to wear the ilishek on top. This is a different status. Everyone saw it was a lady of a house. Many elements of the national clothes of the Kyrgyz have now gone out of use. However, now there are craftswomen who make yelisheks in modern style. One of them is Altan Kuz Nurakkızı. A modern yelishek consists of three parts, side, upper and back. It's made of natural fabrics. At first, the cot is made. Pieces of fabrics are cut out with the help of drafts. Now I'm going to show you the cut of the yelishek. I have drafts here. I make it with a height of 14-15 centimeters depending on the size of the head. Now I'm going to make yelishek of a size 60. It takes a little longer to make yelishek. I add another 2-3 centimeters as girls usually have thick hair. After I cut out the fabric, I cut two layers because the length should be 60 centimeters. A part of the yellow shake is the El Kalma, a rectangular piece of fabric which covers the neck and stitched under the chin. After the cut, the details of the future Yelashek are connected using another material. Fabrics of different colors and shades may be used. I'm sticking parts together. I'll start with front part. Then I sew the back part down. And then I sew down the top like that. We have finished. All the stitches are arranged so that the person who will wear it will like it. The history of felt making is rooted in the depth of centuries. For many nomadic people, this material was the main kind of textile that served man throughout his life. With its help, yurts, various carpets, clothes, shoes and other useful things were created. The felt is now being revived and the craft has evolved from vital to a form of artistic expression. Felt gives birth to new creative solutions. For example, felt accessories, paintings and women's bags are considered to be trendy. The felting attracted me with the use of a completely natural material. Wool is used among Kazakhs and Slavic people. The felt gives great opportunities, that is, you can do everything starting from small souvenirs to large interior things. It's very flexible. It allows you to create almost everything. Today, I will show you the process of handbags felting. We're going to need this kind of locket, which will have a handbag attached to it. 
it will be a decoration. The felting of the bag begins with the making a template, and it depends on the locket you take for your handbag. We have a small handbag today, rounded locket, so we will work with this shape. We need to calculate the shrinkage factor. It's very important because in the process of felting, wool will contract and shape will decrease. The average shrinkage ratio is 1 to 6. So I increase the handbag. It becomes flooding. Then take the template maker, fold in half and cut. This is how I got a template for my handbags. У меня получится шаблон для моей сумочки. Так как у меня сумочка будет с национальным орнаментом, то я под свою... Since the handbag will have a national ornament, I made it myself under my blank. At first, I calculated on millimeter paper to fit the size. It will be necessary to do such a thing, which is called pre-felt, that is colored felt. You can make it of any color. We apply the ornament to the colored felt and make lines. My ornament is ready. I cut it out. It consists of two parts. That part I will use too. For now, I'll put it aside and we'll start the process of felting. Raw materials are one of the main secrets of felt products manufacturing. The real felt comes from sheep wool. Since ancient times, there are several known techniques of wool felting, and new ones are invented. But we will stop at the technique of wet and dry felting. Two kinds of wool can be used for felting. The first, the base, is rough, fibrous with top hair. It will go from the inside to give the handbag rigidity. This kind of wool is good for the bag to hold shape. I took rough wool, divided into two parts. One part will be used for this side of the bag, the other for this one. It will take about 100 and 150 grams of wool to make the bag, and the fibers drawn are laid in five layers, horizontal and vertical lines. For wood to be conveniently pulled, you have to hold it by the tip. We begin to lay it. I lay out skinny layers. They should be uniform. with no holes in between. The density of the bag depends on the composition of the wool. The layers should uniformly cover the surface of the template. Readiness is indicated by the fact that the future product becomes dense, resilient, and does not deform when compressed. The wool should not be spread. It should lie evenly. There should be no shifts. It must be covered with such a net. Now I'm starting to mix the soap with water. Now I need to press the wool, soak it and wet it. 
It's necessary to kick out all air bubbles so that wool is wet and fused. Now I take the blank and gently turn it over. I bend these edges of wool. Then we repeat the same process on the other side. After I laid five layers of wool on both sides, the base is ready. I start the process of decoration. That is, I put the ornament. Ornament markings are made by the eye and laid on wool. In order to improve the fiber connection, the fabric is soaked again and hand treated and smoothed with a machine, compacting the ornament into felt. Wool needs to be treated carefully because it's still so slick. It can shift, so all movements are gentle. At the initial stage, it's especially important. We initially got the felt. It's already a little stuck. You can see for yourself. So when I pull it out, it goes up, but already holds on to each other. The next stage is felt skating. It's called felting. The manufacturing of felt being a manual production is a hard process. Felt fabric is rolled with a rolling pin with up and down movements of hands in one and then in the other direction. The roll process lasts for at least an hour, as a result of which the felt is compacted and pressed. I feel that my I feel like the wool has clutched. It's dense enough and gradually the template becomes small. Now I'm felting it by hands and it can be pulled out of there. When the roll is finished, the inner template must be removed and the inside of the back must be processed. When this part of the work is completed, the felt is sent for washing and drying. The next stage is decoration. I will show you how I make dry felting to strengthen our ornament to highlight it. It's possible to add some wool with the help of a special needle for dry felting. It's sharp and it has barbs when you start to push the wool. First are entangled and dry. And of course, it will be necessary to stitch the inside of our bag. Inside it's fluffy, and for it to be comfortable, you need to process the inside. I made it with a pocket, that's how I'll put it in here. Sew it down, then I'll sew a locket which has holes. All this is sewn with threads and strongly held dry. My spring bag with the national ornament is ready. This is how it looks from the inside. The bag can be taken with you to the theater. It's very neat. And I hope that the owner of this bag will wear it for a long time.